Hey everybody, thanks for watching Science with Mike. Today we're going to talk about the speed or the rate of chemical reactions and four things we can do to alter that rate. And the whole time I want you to think about one thing. Collisions. That's right, for a molecule to react and become other molecules, sometimes it needs to collide into other molecules or a molecule of itself with a certain energy and an orientation. So speaking of speeding things up, I'm going to stop talking and we're going to do something. Factor number one is surface area. All right, this is like a podium powder. It's from the spores of moss plants, and it burns. Not that well, though, when it's all clumped up. See, I can make it kind of singe if I put the flame next to it. Well, not really when it's all clumped up and has a very low surface area. It can't get in contact with the oxygen molecules. All right, next thing is. Now, if I put it into this tube, and make a finely divided cloud of it with very high surface area. Different story. Think about the gasoline in your car or why you grind coffee beans. Higher surface area gets the molecules in contact with each other. Now let's do that 14 more times. I think a slow motion would be cool, don't you think? <laughs> Good times. Factor number two is concentration, or how crowded the molecules are. This is something called the iodine clock reaction. It produces iodine and starch, making a dark blue color. But when the concentrations are known, we can time it. And it'll always happen at the same time. There. 14 seconds. Now, now that I know the time and the concentrations, I'll do it again, and you can use this as a way to mess with people. Now watch, I'll do the same concentration again. It'll happen at the same time, because the molecules are just as crowded as they were before. And abracadabra. I'll do that for kids, and they'll say, are you magic? And I'll say, no, magic isn't real, and neither is the tooth fairy. Okay, this time I'm going to cut the concentration in half by diluting it by half with water. And how much you want to bet the time will go slower because the molecules can't bump into each other as often. Last time it took 14 seconds. There we go, 35 seconds. Basically, cut the concentration down, molecules bump into each other less, the reaction rate is slower. I don't know, I feel like I could do something. Oh, did I not do out of frame? No. Well then, what, just whatever. Okay, I'll do it again, huh? <laughs> Factor number three you can change is the temperature, because when you increase the temperature, molecules move around faster, and hit each other more often. All right, this is actually something you could do at home if you're careful. I almost hurt myself with hot water. I don't want to melt the thing. So, okay. <laughs> hot water can do more damage than you think. These are just Silum glow sticks. They're the little things you use at night when you are camping or whatever. And there's a reaction in there that is similar to what goes on in a lightning bug's fanny. I don't know, I'm not a biologist. And when you break these, the reaction starts. I'm going to start them both at the same time. They're about equal brightness. But I'm going to take this one, put it in cold water. I'm going to take this one and put it in the warm water. And we'll see what happens after time and if there's a difference. And as you can see, this one in the lower temperature is glowing a lot less, and this one is glowing a lot brighter. Now, the good news is this guy's going to last longer. You ever leave the milk out of the refrigerator and it's spoiled? Well, I did when I was a kid, and my mom told me I could have done better. 
I don't know why I'm milking the puns. <sighs> Number four is the presence of a catalyst. Think if the collisions had a helper or a matchmaker. And right here, we've got hydrogen peroxide, but it's 10 times stronger than the kind you get in the drugstore. This is 30% hydrogen peroxide. Usually you see it in a brown bottle. We keep it in a dark closet because the light will actually help it decompose into water and oxygen. And we're gonna speed that up a bunch with the helper, the catalyst. Now as this sits there, you'll see the development of little bubbles of oxygen. And that's one of the products of the reaction. But potassium iodide is a catalyst for the reaction. I'm not gonna do it here, I'm gonna do it in this tub. Because, well, you'll see why. And you see these paper towels are here for a reason too. Now in order to catch the bubbles, I usually put a little bit of soap suds in there. That's gonna help kind of trap the oxygen that's produced. And to make it a little bit festive. What's your favorite color, guys? What do you wanna do? Red. Red? Okay, green. Sounds good. <laughs> we'll do reddish green. Make, you gotta keep the crew happy. I don't even know what red and green mix together to make. There you go, like brown, orange. Now when I do this for kids, we usually do like a countdown from 10, but I think that's kind of childish. So we're just gonna do a countdown from three. Okay, three, two, one. That's all oxygen and steam. And if you could touch this thing, which I will not, this is very, very, very hot because we sped that reaction up a bunch and it makes a lot of heat. Yeah, that's hot. Hey, thanks for watching Science with Mike. Drive carefully. No collisions, please.